Let's see. A text without a context is a pretext. A pretext is something that is not true. So you've got to have everything in context. The context of Genesis 19 is paganism. Okay? It's not going to the fair, it's paganism. Now, going to the fair might constitute paganism. Amen! <laughs> I'm not going to run into anything in no place. I ain't been there fair in 25 years, but I'm not knocking that. Okay, go to the fair. But uh, anyway, anyway, we're dealing with tattoos, all right? We're dealing with permanent markings on the flesh. We're dealing with religious <coughs> markings and things of that nature. <coughs> and so, uh, like I say, if you want to take it further than that, <coughs> just stay right with the Lord, okay? Don't do something you think is wrong. Because you will mark it down and sin whether it is or not. You all understand that passage? Yes, sir. All I want to know is anything about this. <laughs> Son, I don't keep up with Jenny's bats. You'll have to ask her about that, okay? <laughs> that ain't none of my business. Where'd she ever take it from? Or <laughs> I don't care if she never takes a bath. I'll just stay away. <laughs> I'll just stay on the other side of the aisle or something, you know. <laughs> All right, uh, hopefully I'm going to wind this session, this study up tonight. Uh, I don't want to linger it on, on and on. There's more stuff. But uh, but the reason I'm giving one more shot at it is because there's a facet of it that I didn't cover, and you need to understand this part of it too. So we'll get to that a little bit later um, in just a few minutes. First of all, I want you to go to... Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, most Christians, even backslidden Christians, would never intentionally desecrate or defile a local church building. I don't think most would, probably none would. Uh, even among most lost people, there's a kind of a reference and sacredness to church building. I realize today that is slipping away, and, uh, but we live in Pottsville today and they don't do anything and drug heads and all that stuff. And this building's been desecrated. I don't know how many of you know that, but it was uh, when we first uh, occupied the building. Some very ugly stuff was painted on the, the end of the building down there outside the fellowship hall. And interestingly about that, we called the police and the cop that looked at it, he, he recognized the handwriting. He said, I, I'm sure I know who did that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but most people, you know, they, they won't do something. And if you're really born again, then you don't want to do something like that. But even more so than that, you realize that this building is not the temple of the Holy Ghost. This body is. First Corinthians 6, verse 19, for me to pass this. What? No, you're not. But your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have in God. You're not your own. <clears throat> for you're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's. And by the way, I'm going to be showing some slides up here. If y'all can't see them, well, you might want to. Move to this side, uh, you're going to see uh, some interesting stuff tonight, I think. So, we're God's building. Uh, Ephesians 2, verses 19 and 22, Paul says, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building Fit and framed together, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also building, also are building, uh, together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. So this is the real church, okay? Y'all understand what I'm trying to say? That. This is the real building of God. This is the real house of God. And so even though most uh, Christians would not desecrate a church bill, they'd be appalled if somebody did, but a lot of them wouldn't think twice about desecrating the real temple of the Holy Ghost. Their body with tattoos and scarifications. Look at First Corinthians chapter three. <clears throat> the Lord warns us several times about the seriousness of defiling the temple of God, which is our body. And He says, "If you do that, He'll destroy you." Chapter three, verse sixteen. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Holy, uh, the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is what? Holy. Holy. <clears throat> Which temple do you are? Now, an example of that is given in chapter 5, verse 5, where God's talking about defiling the body with fornication. And he says, deliver such one to Satan for what? The destruction of the body. 
and so that tattoos don't destroy them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sure of that if I were to show you some slides that show sure they will. Okay. So uh, this is the temple of God, and it is holy unto the Lord, and therefore it should not be desecrated. And I realize we desecrate the temple in more ways than just put marks on it. Okay. Y'all think about that too. The meeting I was in last week, a guy preached on on uh, things that Christians shouldn't do, and uh, to their body, and he dealt with health uh, a little bit on that, and probably made half the congregation mad. <laughs> Uh, just like I do sometimes. By the way, I appreciate those of you who did pray for me on this trip last Tuesday night, not last night, the week before. Uh, the big preacher showed up. The little preacher didn't get to preach and seven people got saved Amen. that night and then the next night, two more. And three of those, if I'm right about this, were the pastor's grandkids. Oh, yeah. Amen. So getting all his family in. Amen. Amen. Good meeting, though. I appreciate y'all praying for Amen. me if you did. Okay. All right, so God's uh, temple, which is your body, is holy. And that means you cannot do what you want to with it. Why not? It doesn't belong to you. The Lord likens himself and, and us as uh, a bridegroom and a bride. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. A bridegroom and a bride, according to 1 Corinthians 7, verses 3 to 5, he or she, neither one, has control of their own body. It belongs to their mate. You know what the Bible teaches? And so our body as a Christian belongs to the Lord. And uh, it's up to him to use it any way he pleases. And we, we defy it. We are, we are desecrating something that is holy unto the Lord. So we need to watch what we do with our body and to our body, the temple of a holy God. And to defile it uh, with pagan, uh, heathenistic, uh, devil-worshipping tattoos is a, is a desecration of the temple. The Lord said in Numbers 23, verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Hath he said, and shall he not do it? What did he say, what we just read a minute ago? We defile the temple, God will what to the temple? Destroy it? You, you're speaking like you don't really believe that. He will destroy it. He will destroy it. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Remember what we read in uh, Revelation 16 about the tattoo or whatever it's going to be that the, the beast is going to give out and how it produced sores, noisome and grievous sores, the Bible said. So, could you really believe Jesus would be pleased with a Christian? Getting a tattoo or a pagan tattoo, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think God's will is that we be marked up with anything demonic at all. Now, I gave you, in the last few weeks, I gave you uh, quote after quote documentation, most of it from Tattoo Pro people. I gave you all kind of Bible references we looked at, and uh, a whole lot more could be given. But there be, should be no question left in anyone's mind. They're wrong. Period, paragraph, end of discussion. They are wrong. Every tattoo historian that I quoted traces the roots of the tattoo back to religious paganism. Every single one of them did that, without exception. And those people are pro tattoo. 2 Corinthians 6, verses 14 to 17, verse 14, be you not unequally together with unbelievers. That's a warning uh, as well uh, against the tattoo as anything else. So how do you get that? Well, it says in verse 16 that uh, the temple of God, which temple of you are, is to have no fellowship with, uh, uh, with uh, the temple of the devil. We're to have no fellowship with anything the devil is doing. So uh, it relates fellowshipping with our body, uh, the temple of God. So another warning against it. And uh, I realize a lot of Christians don't care what God says about this or a lot of other subjects, and they're going to do what they want to anyway. Makes no difference to them what the Word of God says. And in fact, I was talking to a lady last week about something out of the Word of God, and she said, mm, That's Old Testament. I said, Duh, absolutely. That's exactly right. It's Old Testament. <laughs> so the New Testament, the New Testament changes that. I said, No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. So anyway, what happened? Discussion ended. <laughs> she didn't want to talk more about it. Okay. But anyway, Christians are going to do what they want to do. Is that not true? We're going to do what we want to do. And if it's wrong, we're going to justify it some way or other. Right. We're going to say something about the word to justify ourselves. And by the way, you can prove anything you want to. Take this stuff out of context. We all know that. You know that's why you've got so many different denominations 
and so forth. But if you believe God and take God in His Word and try to live the best you can by that Word, then uh, you're going to hear the Lord say one day, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Hey. Go down to the joy of thy <coughs> Lord. And so what, what's the deal? God loves us. He wants us to love Him. And our love for Him is shown by what? If you love me, keep my commandments. It's shown by our obedience to uh, the Lord. And so His will is that we love Him and serve Him with all. He says, with all your soul, your mind, your strength, and your body, He says. So, we need to uh, obey the Lord in all matters. Not just what we like and what we don't like. 2 Peter 3, verses 17 and 18. Therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul said in Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, beloved, that you present what? Your bodies. A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Carl, put number 95 up there, okay? Slide number 95. So you had a good time? You had a good time if you can't be? I did. I did. Yes, sir. I don't know if the people I was preaching to had a good time, but I did. <laughs> sure. Someone told me the same, almost the same thing you said just a couple weeks ago. And like, well, that's in the Old Testament. So I showed them a verse in the New Testament that said, preach the word. Uh -huh. And I said, the New Testament saying, so we should read this, right? They're like, yeah. I said, all that they had was the Old Testament. Exactly so that right. means we should really be preaching only the Old Testament. <laughs> they were dumbfounded and had no reply. That's, that's all Paul had to go by. Amen. Every time he used the word scriptures or the word, it's all like the Old Testament. All right, this is the last uh, major section of this study, number seven, the stigma of tattoos, and that, that stigma is regret. Um, the medical profession and the pharmaceutical companies get a lot of increased business thanks to the hepatitis C tattoo connection. They get a lot of extra business on account of that. And another business that's booming because of the tattoo craze is the tattoo removal business. And uh, that is very getting very widespread, widespread, which is uh, done by dermatologists, and uh, so their business is increasing as well. According to the American Society of Dermatological Surgery, over 50% of everyone receiving a tattoo eventually wants it removed, whether they get it removed or not. Uh, they want it removed. Um, a quote from the St. Louis Post Dispatch <coughs> says, "Quote." Tattooed population beginning, this is the headline, tattooed population beginning to seek removal of body designs. In the article, it, it, uh, it says, what was I thinking? That seems to be the question millions of Americans who have surrendered recently to the tattoo fad are asking, only to find the absolute newest fad is tattoo removal. And the article goes on to say, what took probably 15 minutes and $40 to put on is going to take a few years and $5,000 to get off. Do you think I wish I'd never got the tattoos? Absolutely, end of quote. They remove tattoos by laser surgery, and uh, that's one of the fastest growing areas of dermatology uh, these days. And depending on the size of the tattoo and the colors that are involved in it, uh, the removal can be very painful and take a long time, very expensive, several sessions involved sometimes. And uh, the article said tattoos done by commercial tattoo parlors, which is where most of them are done, are a lot more difficult to remove because the tattoo is deeper and the ink is more complex and thicker. <coughs> Takes between 10 and 15 laser surgery sessions to get the, some of these things off, and some of them take as many as 30 or 40 sessions. Yes, sir. There's also a couple of TV shows that comes on where people gotten tattoos. It may be a little small tattoo of somebody's name. Yeah. And they. Got, they're not together anymore. Now they have to get another name, a tattoo to cover that up. <clears throat> and that's a big business right now. I know it is. There's a lot of botch uh, tattoos out there. It's People got when they were drunk and they didn't realize they got it until yeah. they get home yeah. and what it was and everything. Now they got it. They get bigger ones because they got to cover up that. It's time to put somebody's tattoo on you, somebody's name on you. <laughs> Crazy. 
Uh, says the average uh, single session costs between $400 and $800, so the removal surgery can be very expensive, costing as much as $20,000. The $25 tattoo might cost $5,000 to remove, and health insurance does not cover tattoo removals. And it says, in spite of the enormous personal costs, when most people finally get disgusted with the tattoo, they're willing to pay any cost to have it removed. Yes. No, we'll see that. Oh, okay. We will see that. A plastic surgeon, Talbert Wilkinson of San Antonio, uh, he removes tattoos. He gives this warning quote, if people only realize how difficult it is to remove a tattoo, if they only understood how costly and how painful tattoo removal is, well, putting it on there in the first place is painful, but everything I'm reading is far more painful to get the thing off. Uh, and if they recognize that society as a whole still views tattoos as a stigma, that's fading away, Maybe they would think seriously before getting one. Laser removal costs a minimum of $7,000 national average per tattoo and takes at least 10 to 15 treatments spread out over two or more years. Even with the treatment, the tattoo is still visible, end of quote. From the book, Everything You Need to Know About the Dangers of Tattooing and Body Piercing, quote, an ever-rising number of people are so unhappy with their tattoos that they're willing to pay anything to have them removed Tattoo removal laser surgery is becoming big business for the dermatologist who is performing, end of quote. Uh, the book I've quoted several times, Art, Sex, and Symbol, it's talking about, uh, in this particular article, it's talking about tattoos from the British sailors. Quote, from the statistics of the Royal Naval Survey, the most significant factor to emerge was almost certainly the incidence of regrets. Out of the whole, whole sample, more than half admitted that they wished they had never been tattooed. In the married group, the figure rose to around 70%, which they had never been tattooed. And as Brother Martin pointed out a minute ago, a lot of people are about half looped and drunk and doped up when they do stuff like this. And then when they come to their senses, what are you going to do about it? Um, one internet article claims as many as 80% of people with tattoos regret their tattoo. I'm going to read from an email written by a Christian, and here's what he says, quote, I've just completed reading uh, the article on tattooing and the truth of it uh, all deeply troubled me. I'm a Christian and like most, I've backslidden several times throughout my life. During one of these times, I received two tattoos. One is a tribal band on my left arm, though it doesn't fully circle the the whole upper arm. The other's on my right shoulder. Now listen to this. Talking about somebody's name a while ago, listen to what this idiot did. The other's on my right shoulder, the letters MSC in cursive, in cursive writing, signifying the names of my best friend, his wife, and their little daughter. Does that idiotic or what? He put the initials of his best friend, his best friend's wife, his best friend's little daughter on his shoulder. Even though I love my friend and his family, I deeply regret getting their initials tattooed on my body. Moreover, I seriously and gravely regret, with all my heart, getting my other tattoo, the tribal band, on my left arm. Being a few years older now, 29 and married, there is not a day that goes by that I don't regret getting these tattoos. When I dress, I'm forced to see them in the mirror. When I shower, I'm forced to see them. What makes matters worse is that I knew all along that it was wrong. Now, see that? As a Christian... It was wrong, did it anyway, in, a, in his little backslidden state, he said. But be careful when you're backslidden on the Lord. You might do something you're going to regret later. You ought to regret backsliding in the first place. Amen. He said, I justified it with a with backslidden mind by thinking such things as God only considers the heart and mind. Boy, I've heard that one before. You know, God looks at the heart. Oh, yeah, stupid. He looks on the outward appearance, too. Hey. And I didn't just quote scripture just then. Amen. Amen. What he's saying there is all we got to see is the outward appearance. Yes, sir. He said to the <laughs> island, not to see. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> see everything. He said God, he said he justified by saying God only considers the heart and mind, and uh, physical sins don't compare to spiritual sins, and so on and so on. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. With my depraved and backslidden mind, I justify an abomination to God himself who instructs us through his divine law not to create any marks on our bodies. If this is the law that will be used to rightly judge the world, how much more should we as Christians observe and uphold it? Well, that is the law he's going to judge us by, that law, that Old Testament law. 
He goes on and says, the woman doing my first tattoo, the tribal man, now listen to this, we've talked about the tattoo, tattoo people sometimes doing rituals and stuff like that. The woman doing my first tattoo, the tribal man, had to stop several times for mysterious reasons. She was visibly shaken and could not concentrate. She kept, kept saying, man, I need a break. Though it wasn't for my sake, I hid the pain very well and tuned it out uh, for the most part, but this woman could not wait to get me out of the chair. She claimed that she drank quite a bit the night before. I was getting the tattoo on a Saturday afternoon, and this seemed to be the most logical reason that she was having such a tough time. I can't help but wonder, however, if there was more to it. Even then, my diminished discernment was working, and I sensed a spiritual conflict taking place. You understand what he's talking about? When the woman had finished, she made a disturbing remark that will forever echo in my mind. She said, there you go, you're no longer a virgin. Of course, she spoke not of physical sexuality, but of spiritual defilement against God in the form of marking my flesh. Now I was one of the gang, one of the cool people, and one of the rebels who shakes their fist at the law of God. I wonder why she said that. She was, she was having a spiritual battle going on in her mind over this. Why? Christian sitting there getting something from the devil and she was performing it even though she might not have known he was a Christian there was a conflict going on. Amen. He goes on and says, I'm still troubled even though I, even knowing that I'm forgiven. My only hope is for the glorification of the body when the Lord shall raise us uncorruptible. My tattoos stand as constant reminders of my past depravity when I forsook truly walking with God and only rendered him lip service. They will continue to be my marks of shame for the rest of the time appointed. That's why uh, some Christians that I know have tattoos, they always wear long sleeve shirts and buttoned down at the wrist. Why the cover that up? Lenny Hasbrook had them on his arm. He got when he was in the Navy. He never showed that to anybody. Never let anybody see that. Why? He's ashamed of it. That's why. He says, uh, hopefully this message will get out of all the right people here and save them from the fate of my shame and regret. It would bring great solace to know that another person would uh, read this and avert my mistakes, which I would take back in a second if only I had the chance. Uh, through my own research, I've drawn all the same conclusions you have concerning tattooing, body modifications, and other self-destructive practices. Hmm. You wouldn't want to have to say it. You wouldn't want to have to have a testimony down the road somewhere. Regret and shame. So, before you let ink ruin the rest of your life, you better think very, very cautiously, very careful about that. Uh, and uh, not only that, but not only shame, it's a little bit of the health consequences. We talked about that. The spiritual consequences, the social consequences. Might not be able to get a job because of, of that kind of stuff. And uh, the fact that later on, more than likely, you will regret it, you will hate it. You will uh, wish you'd never done it, and then you'll face uh, the possibility of tons of money and time and pain to get all that you to live with regret the rest of your life. I got a little note here that uh, a doctor in Chicago does, he goes to inner city twice a month and does uh, tattoo removal uh, for uh, kids in the inner city there. He does it as a ministry, and he said when he takes, gets the tattoo off, it completely changes the attitude of the young person, and once again, they begin to live like a normal young person should live. Hey. So why is that? Well, if the way we dress affects our attitude, then markings on us will affect our attitude as well. Hey. I mean, if you're going to look like a punk, you're going to start acting like one. Right. Amen. All right, uh, another quote here. Tattooing and body piercing, that's the name of this book. Quote, well, emotional risk include negative feelings you might have as a result of getting a tattoo or piercing. Social risk are those that could damage your relationship with others, including friends, parents, teachers, and employers. For example, body modification can affect your chances for future employment. Certain jobs are not available to people who have uh, visible body art. Well, we saw some that who in the world would hire them to do anything. From the book, Everything You Need to Know About the Dangers of Tattooing, quote, the fact that so many people change their minds should lead you to think carefully about whether you want to lock yourself into a fashion statement that might cause you a lot of aggravation and heartache later in life. Uh, what so few realize, tragically, is that such a mark, a tattoo, becomes the albatross around the neck for all time, end of quote. Now, we're going we're gonna to close out. We're looking at some... some um, 
pictures here, and the next several uh, deal with Christian tattoos. Put the next one up there, Paul. Say, so how do you know that's a Christian tattoo? Because there's 1 Corinthians 15, 55. This skull has a crown. There's a sword going down through his head. And this one over here says, in remembrance, has to do with communion. Okay? All right, let's go to the next one. That says, Christ is king. His king is run together. It took me a few minutes to read that and figure Christ is, it is king. I'm like, what is that? Christ is king. doesn't have those two words uh, separated. All right, let's get another one. Acts 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Uh, the, next, the next one, Jesus on the cross. And then the next one is Jesus, supposedly. Catholic version of Jesus, of course. Uh, now, now this next one, put it up there, Paul. As Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper on his nuts arm here, and put the next one up, here's another version of the same thing. Can you imagine having that on your arm? <laughs> All right, the next one. This is Psalm 1, and that's the new King James he's got coming on there. It's not the King James. Okay. Now, why would you do that? What a letdown. Why would you do that? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? All right, look at this next one. Now, most of you in here know the young man that has this tattoo on him. If I called his name, probably 90% of you know who I'm talking about. Shall I call his name? Yes. Sure. It's Danny Drummond. That's on the back of Danny Drummond. Two guitars, cross, chosen. And he has tattoos on his chest as well. So, say, so what's he doing about it? I'll tell you what he's doing about it. He's singing in a Christian rock band. That's what he's doing. Uh, and he's a member of the uh, Church of God. He's defected the faith. And he has earrings too. Does he? Yes. I didn't know about that. I've got, a, I've got a picture of his two girls at Christmas time, his twins, they're about mm, five years old, sitting under, sitting under Christmas tree at Christmas time doing the devil's song. Both of them. And I got a picture of him doing it at one of his rock concerts. You, get, you backslide on God, I'm going to tell you, you don't know where you're going to end up. You don't know how far you'll take it. Right. Now the next several, just a minute, Carl, are dumb. Tattoos, okay? That's D U M B, dumb. Put the next one on there. That's on the back of this guy's head. It's the back of his head. You can see you coming and going. All right, put the next one up. Now, I want you to notice several things. First of all, scarification. See that? The rings in the earlobes. Look at his eyes. Black, black eyeballs and uh, whatever his iris is. This says godness. He's got that right down here. Down there is a cross. Here's a demon. And I can't tell what's on the other side. How would you like to walk around the rest of your life saying godless? Mm. Crazy, crazy, crazy. It looks like what happens. It is. All right, go to the next one. Her finger is sticking to her tongue. You see that? Not to mention all of a sudden junk. Uh, all over this woman. Isn't that crazy? Nuts. All right, let's see the next one. Here's the name, Brenda. It's about 50 times on this guy's back in every font imaginable. And if that's his girlfriend and his wife and he ever changes, he's in trouble. <laughs> better be his mother. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> and you're ready to stop so stupid. And even the letters it spelled Brenda over and over in each letter, like that. Thousands of dollars that he's been I don't know, but if you ever dump some Brenda, it's going to spend a lot more. <laughs> I bet his new girlfriend's name is going to be Brenda. He's got what? His new girlfriend's name is going to be Brenda. Oh, right here, yeah. Yeah. Something in the Navy Something is, uh... <laughs> Christian tattoos? No, this is not. These are dumb tattoos. Okay, we, we saw the Christian one. Now we're looking at the dumb category. <laughs> Every font you can think of and get on your computer as long as you guys back. Mm. Brilliant. Is that not brilliant? Crazy, crazy. People are nuts. Let's see. I want to say something else about that one. I forgot now. 
it was, but I guess it was important. All right, let's go to the next one. This guy obviously did, cannot read Chinese. That's off the Chinese menu. It says chicken noodle soup. <laughs> Y'all ever seen these Chinese things on people? They don't know what the Chinese saying. Chicken noodle soup. Oh. <laughs> yeah, put on there. I love my mama. Chicken noodle soup. <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, all right, here's another weirdo. Put the next one up. Eyes on his head. That's weird. How about this one? Go to the next one. Hello Kitty inside the lip. Yeah. Okay, you ladies like Hello Kitty? That much? Mm. All right, what? Put the next one on. That is a tattoo. It's not a real pen. Yeah, if you look close, you can tell that. It's, it's not a real pen. I guess it, may, it makes the boss think he's always busy or something. <laughs> All right, now go to the next one. That is a bad, <laughs> bad picture. Wow. That does not look like this girl at all. And I, I saw several of those, and a tattooed picture of somebody is horrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In loving memory, that's how that's she did, I guess. Yeah, obviously. Wait, you can see because I'm almost positive I've seen that in my town. You may have. Mm. Think she was allowed to see that? I, mean, I saw some where they put their baby's picture on or something, and the kid looked like a monster. Just, I mean, you know. All right, uh, let's get the next one. His tongue is out the bottom of his chin. See that? Sticking his tongue out under his lip, you can see his teeth through that hole cut in his chin. And his eyes have been uh, messed with. What a mess. Sir. Yes, sir. We'll see some on that in just a minute. Yes, sir. I don't like nobody miss my eyes. But you don't see that they do. Yeah. They can't they do that. They can color your white of your eye, any color you want. No. Yes, sir. The ink is injected. It's not painted on the surface. Okay. You reckon this guy food ever drops out when he's eating? Is his nose gone? I mean, nose, sides of his nose? Yeah, and his holes in his nose. We saw some of those before. And takes those things out, you can see right through yeah. his nose. He'd have a terrible time drinking water, wouldn't he? <laughs> 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 Four out the <laughs> yeah. uh, it is, it is, it is, it is all the devil. Hey. Oh, we laugh about it. That's all the devil. Okay, now this next one she calls herself the vampire woman. She has horns. She is bald. That's not her hair. She's got all kinds of zodiac symbols all over her. She's got the big ear thing. She has heaven written right there on her shoulder. I don't know what heaven she's saying. She has no eyebrows. They've been removed. So they're probably possessed. <laughs> <laughs> Possibility. <laughs> Very good possibility. By the way, her teeth are filed off also. Oh, yeah. Pretty sure that's pretty Which I don't want anybody filing her teeth. I mean, you hit a nerve, man. That's a problem. Mm. <laughs> 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 All right, we're going to look at some tattoo errors. The tattooists do make mistakes, and they cannot be corrected. Go to the next one. This says, never don't give up. Oh, wow. I wish you were sad. I think that's just an Alabama tattoo. <laughs> 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 don't make a mistake, man. All right, go to the next one. You get no heen. <laughs> Left the T out. Believe it should have been believed. I'm sure. Now look at this next one. 
God, never forget God isn't ISINT. Maybe for me it should be ISN apostrophe T. Isn't. Uh, so the grade level of the tattoos was probably third grade, and he just said it the way it was pronounced. All right, the next one. No regrets. <laughs> no regrets. Should be no regrets. Crazy. Oh my word. All right, the next one. This is not King James. Go to the next one. That's a uh, scripture from First Corinthians 13, 11. And what I want you to see, the last line, but when I grew up, I put away childish things away. <laughs> Too many aways in there. Okay. And preacher, is that reason? Reason. I can't, I can't. I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child, but when I grew up, I put away childish things away. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Daddy, little princess. The apostrophe S is missing. Should be Daddy's Little Princess. Okay. Next one. The female, F-E-A-M-A-L-E, -E, boss. She might be boss, but she can't spell. F-E-A-M-A-L-E. -E. And notice how happy she looks. She's happy with her tattoos. You think so? All right. The next one. You're stronger than your think. The first your should be Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. And the second one should be um, you, not your. You're stronger than your think. I don't know that they're drunk. They're just they're fools and idiots to start with. And then, you know, they got no sense. Go to the next one. It is my life. Should be it's my life or it is my life. It is my life. That looks like a jailhouse. Yeah, it looks like a homemade deal there. All right, next one. It's get better. Should be it gets better. It's get better. Wow. Not for that tattoo. It doesn't get better on that one, okay? Let's go to the next one. That's a uh, Christian saved, so to speak. God give me this strength to accept things and so forth. But down in the one, two, three, four, fourth line, and the wisdom should be wisdom. But an N instead of a W there. Okay. Go to the next one. That's on uh, somebody's foot. Strength. S-T-R-E-A-N-G-T-H. That's not how you spell strength. Anybody know how to spell it? S T R E N. Okay. Stuck an A in there. Uh, next one. Living is the strongest drug. No T. No T. Who the girl on the other side says female boss. Okay, next one. Nothing lasts forever. <laughs> Should be no apostrophe in there. She's better over than last forever. Okay, next. My life, my choice, C H O I S. Should be C H O I C E, right? Okay. I mean, tattoo, art, tattoo artists are real educated dingbats, right? Mm. Let's go to the next one. My mom is my angle. I'm sure. I'm sure it was an angel, but the uh, mom's an angel. All right, next, I'm awesome. Should be A-W-E, that's what we mean, awesome. One more, this is different from the other one, but it's no regret. It's like the other one, should be no regret. All right, next, live your life, should be while you are, as you are. Contraction there. Next one. You only life once. I'm sure they meant live, but they said life. They lived in prison, they meant life. <laughs> <laughs> they should have been. I don't know. Okay, next. To slums. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Okay, one more. God would judge J-U-G-E me. J-U-G-E. And notice the grim reaper on his back. God would judge me. All right, we're going to look at some of those tattoo removal attempts and see what happens. Go to the next one, Carl. Now, I want you to notice something. This guy's getting his tattoo removed. Here's what it was. Notice no hair grows where the tattoo was. See that? No hair growing there where they had to remove it. So the tattooing, the ink, and all that destroys the follicles in the skin. Okay? Let's go to the next one. <coughs> She's trying to remove that cross tattoo. There's what's left. Okay? Um, go to the next one. Those are blisters caused by the removal process. Okay. Do the next one. Had a tattoo on his finger, got it removed, and that's what happened. And sometimes it'll grow a hard uh, nodule type of thing wherever it's at, where it was at. All right, do another one. Some of these are caused by ink allergies. One more. <coughs> Being removed, leaving it blistered up and so forth. All right, let's try another one. That arm is, is badly infected. <coughs> removing the tattoo. Oh, okay, let's go to another one. That one's infected, go to another one. Badly infected, that's not the first hand I showed you about there with the blister, it's a different one. All right, one more. There is eye tattooing. Injecting the ink just under the skin and the eyeball. Can you imagine somebody doing that to you? No. Hmm. I couldn't stand that. Even if I like tattoos. All right, notice the next one. That's, uh, that's uh, scarification from eyebrow removal. Left in his face looking like that, with that gross uh, sore there. Here's some more eye tattooing. Go to another one. Injecting, holding the eye open, injecting ink into it, black ink in this case. Uh, here's a bad eye, eye tattoo. Go ahead. That's one that's gone bad. Go to the next one. That's another one gone bad. See where the ink was, was placed, and instead of it doing what it's supposed to, it made uh, his eyeball sore. I don't know, I don't know, I couldn't find anything that said they could ever correct that kind of stuff. I don't know if I could or not. Uh, Looks like that'd be against the law. That's not. All right, let's uh, look at some more removal infections. Go to the next one. Another one. Get the next one. Guys, uh, ankle there, all messed up. Let's go to another one. Those are all infected from attempting to remove it. Go ahead. On the girl's foot, and badly infected uh, foot. Another one. Okay, one more. Another infected foot. Okay, infected arm. Uh, let's get another one. Greatly infected leg. Or arm, that might, that might be an arm, I don't know what it is. All right, uh, one more. Now this is after the thing's been removed, that's scars. <coughs> See that? It's not infected, that's scars. Uh, that person will have that dragon on his or her arm the rest of their life, can't do nothing about it. And obviously they want to do something about it, they wouldn't go into the trouble to get it removed. Now, before you click this next one, Carl, I want to prepare you, this is, this is, uh, a bad result. Go ahead. Two amputated fingers from infection. That's a doctor with gloves on holding those two fingers. You see them? Had to amputate the guy's fingers because of infection in his hands. Mm, that's bad. Um, okay, let's look at some more. <coughs> more infections. Another one. Another one. Put it swollen up. One more. It used to be a smooth arm, it's not anymore. It looks like a starfish, don't it? Actually, that's a tribal, was a tribal tattoo. Go to the next one. 
That's a tongue infection. From having a tongue ring, <coughs> first I don't know how anybody would stand that, you know, but some folks do. Um, tongue jaw infection, and infection spread all the way out there on this person's tongue. Um, okay, next one's a belly button infection from a belly ring, and the next one's from a belly ring. The ring entered here and there, and that whole area is infected. Um, next one's infected ears. One more. See so that up top the earlobe. We read somewhere that you go to poking holes in the cartilage, you're asking for really more serious trouble. All right, go to the next one. Earlobe, the ear, whole ear is infected. Um, See that poncho up top, but it'll never go away. That's where rain was. Let's go to the next one. And on the lobe there is infected. Next one, that's a tongue infection again. See that stuff going to that person's tongue? All right, go to the next one. That's an ear. Badly infected. Next one. That's an ear. Um, the nodule growing around the, the little pin that goes through the whole the, whole the ear ring. <coughs> All right, one more. That's an eye infected from a thing that was up here. Got the whole area infected. I love it there. Uh, one more. That's a, under the nose, infected right there, and going into the lip. Now look at this next one. Look at that. Between his nostrils is destroyed from infection. All right, let's go to another one. Another ear infection. One more. Another ear infection. How many of you know what your uvula is? One, two, three. Four, five, six. So it's a hang me down thing in the back of your throat. No. The little dude up back there is called a uvula. I think I got that next one. I'm not sure. Go ahead. No, that's another ear. Go to the next one. That's a lip. There it is. Can you imagine somebody putting a ring back in the back there? Oh. Oh. And that is infected, by the way. Well, the don't want is an infected uvula. <laughs> Good night. All right, the next one's infected eyes. Take a look at it. His eyes are infected. Uh, there's, I'm not sure that might be light reflection. It looked like it was where a pen was stuck in there, but I don't know about that. It could be a deflection of light. But both eyes are infected. You can't tell too much from that, but they are. The eyes in trouble. And uh, next is an infected lip. And then an infected ear, see up top? And the last one's an infected tongue. That goes through this character's tongue. Now, my question will be, okay, how do you eat? How do you keep from clomping your teeth down on that? It's sticking out sideways. Crazy, crazy stuff. Crazy What's stuff. That? Yes. Did they not? Even though you know, they'll take them out. <coughs> Uh, if they can, we saw one of an ear back up there where it couldn't be taken out till the infection cleared up. Which, uh, whatever. <coughs> okay, uh, I need uh, two young men. I'm going to pass something out. I'm going to close up this uh, study. Somebody else. Pass them out. Everybody tune up, and then we'll see what's left, okay?
Everybody got one? Uh, one back there. Anybody else? Any left? Yes. Does anybody want one for the smaller dish? Yeah, I don't forget what's me and you. <coughs> yes, uh, one more up here. Jared, one more up here. And one more there. Jared, make sure you get one. Uh, give uh, Jesse one. She's going to give it to Jesse. Okay, is that it? All right. Now let's read them when we're done with this study, okay? I'm just going to go through it real quick. Ten reasons why no Christian should get a tattoo. Number one, a Christian should abstain from all the parents of Abel. Well, that makes sense. Even most of the so-called Christian tattoos have a gothic, deathly appearance of evil. And we saw plenty of them to show that, right? Number two, a Christian should not uh, imitate the things of the world. Scripture given on each of these. Number three, every serious study researching the origin of the tattoo traces its beginning to the satanic practice of bloodletting and the self-mutilation cutting off flesh. We saw plenty of evidence on that. Number four, a Christian's body <coughs> excuse me, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> a Christian should not defile the temple of the Holy Ghost with the mark of pagan devils. Number five, the tattoo is a vehicle for the possession of devils and unclean spirits. Even today, ritualistic and tribal tattoos are common tattoo practices in many U.S. tattoo studios. Probably in just about all of them. Number six, the tattoo is a sign of rebellion, and rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Number seven, a tattoo opens your body up to serious possibility of infection from serious health risks such as hepatitis C and AIDS. Tattoos are the primary carrier of hepatitis C. Primary carrier. It used to be drugs, needles, were the primary carrier of hepatitis C. Now tattoos are. Number eight, most people who get a tattoo later regret it. Many people hate to even look at it. Removing a tattoo is very expensive and a lengthy, uh, painful process. Jeremiah 2.22, For though thou wash thee with nitre, and make thee, uh, take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord God. Number nine, the Bible clearly forbids the tattoo. Number 10, a Christian is a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not have a tattoo. If Jesus had a tattoo, then he was a sinner because he did not keep the Old Testament law. Uh, and he could not be the spotless Lamb of God that taken away the sin of the world. We, we looked at uh, that argument in, in detail too. So, what if I already have a tattoo? I don't know if anybody out here has got one or not. I've never seen one on any of you. But if you do, here's what you'll do. Pray and ask God's forgiveness. Amen. 1 John 1, 9. Number two, get checked for hepatitis and uh, do it as soon as possible. It could save your life. Number three, if you can have it removed, then have it removed. If not, keep it covered so you don't be a bad testimony to everybody else. Number four, warn others, especially any young people who are considering getting a tattoo. First Thessalonians 5, 21 23, prove all things. I think we've adequately proven that they're bad. Bad. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. End of study. Any comments? Excellent. Yes, ma'am. Um, we had a plumber at our house last weekend. And, and this is about people not being able to get jobs. Thing. This is a plumber. And he said that they have two empty trucks at Paul's AAA Plumbing, and that they cannot have, they have not been able to find anybody who will apply for the job that is not covered in facial piercings and tattoos and just, you know, looks decent enough to go into somebody's home. And they refuse to mar their company name by hiring mm -hmm. such. Mm -hmm. And it, and they're like, it's just ridiculous that there are so many people, like my age and below, that they just can't even consider them for hiring. Amen. It's a wonder the government doesn't step in and make them hire, though. Well, they might in the future, but as of right now, they're sticking by their gun. Sure, good. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Laws and Marines, they actually acted on the, the rise in tattoos because everybody was getting sleeves. Um, and they Sure, 
Yes. It's the same way with Air Force. They had a uh, thing out about if you got 75% of your body covered in tattoos, you got to remove it or something like that. And you can't go in with tattoos all over your body. So they're prejudiced and they can stop people from going in. And they will pay for the removal of them. Really? Yeah. The military pay for them. At least the Air Force did. If they wanted to remove, they'd help them get them to pay for them. You know, still, Lamar Stray, but what you got to go through here? Anybody else? Yes, sir. I knew a guy who worked for the airlines when I was there. I do the agent. He sent the public. I guess he wanted to get rid of him. He had a pretty big tattoo 